So hi everyone, welcome to Angelino's Building Community, a series of stories of local people doing great work in support of their community here in Los Angeles. My name is Samantha Vitia and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Natural History Museums of Los Angeles County. And today I'm joined by John Jairo Valencia, Academic Advisor at Inner City Struggle for Mendez High School and Roosevelt High School. John Jairo, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> now, John Jairo, you work specifically with young men from Mendez and Roosevelt High School. That's a big role to play, especially today. I was wondering if you could share a little bit about the work you do to support these young men. Yes, for sure. So, um, again, I work with an organization called Inner City Struggle. Um, it's a community-based organization in the east side of Los Angeles, um, serving different neighborhoods from Bow Heights, El Sereno, Lincoln Heights, uh, East LA. Um, and when I started about almost three years ago, um, I was tasked with um, developing and facilitating a pilot program that was aim aimed specifically at boys of color in Boyle Heights. So I was given a lot of data to look at. Um, and in that data, I found that there's, you know, large um, inequities that, of course, we know that um, communities like Boyle Heights face um, throughout Los Angeles. Um, and specifically looking at data around boys of color, there was a huge engagement gap um, that we saw um, where, you know, boys of color were falling behind significantly in graduation rates, um, access to higher education, um, enrollment. Um, so looking at that data, you know, it was very, you know, it was shocking because, you know, I, I wasn't aware of that, even though I feel like I was well versed in a lot of other issues that were affecting our community, but didn't know specifically how um, boys of color were being impacted. Um, so in the creation of that program and looking at that data and figuring out what is it that we can do, um, we created a program that um, we decided to call the Sembrando Scholars Program. Um, and the Sembrando Scholars Program, um, for those who don't know Spanish, the word sembrar or sembrando means to sow. Um, or to um, plant seeds and to grow them. Um, so, you know, that was the basis of this program was to, you know, nurture, um, you know, the young people that we we're gonna work with through this program and have that philosophy that, you know, we're all, we all have the potential um, to grow. We all have the potential to transform like a seed um, because we know historically um, certain communities, um, specific people are, labeled a certain way we know how a lot of students and our neighborhood specifically have been labeled as bad students have been labeled all these things that i can list out um but really you know with time and having the importance of having you know community-based work um having people who are from the community who understand um the issues that we face um we know that the issue is not the students but rather it's a larger um, issue of inequity, of historical racism, and all these things that we can look at. The basic principles of it is to provide academic advising um, to these students um, and also do um, circles with them through a restorative justice framework. Um, so for those who don't know restorative justice, you know, it's a practice that's based in um, values that have existed for thousands of years in a lot of Native cultures. Um, that are being reintegrated into the schools and providing these values and different ways of communicating and building community with each other um, to promote um, community. Um, so with this work, um, you know, provide advising to the students, making sure they're on track, talking to them, providing mentorship, um, whatever, is, whatever it is that they need. And then also doing these community building um, activities where we talk about different issues. So that's the foundation of what this program is um, and what I've been doing for the last two years. Um, and I have students now that I was working with that were 10th and 9th graders who are now um, seniors. Um, so I've seen a couple of these students go through the program. Um, and it's been, you know, quite an amazing, it's been an amazing experience for me who I feel like I'm pretty new to this work. Um, but, you know, it is rewarding and challenging at the same time. Um, but I really appreciate, you know, the team that I have at Inner City Struggle and the long legacy of work that, you know, I'm sitting on top of. That's so amazing and like extremely important, especially now when students are um, kind of getting the short end of the stick with um, educational resources. Um, 
yeah, just super honored to have you here. I think what you do is incredible. Um, you talk a lot about building community in LA, especially with the youth. And I'm wondering if you can share um, what have you learned from working with the youth? For sure. Yeah, I think the word that comes to me is patience. Um, and then sometimes I forget, you know, the foundation of what this program is. <laughs> when I'm, I, I, I'm always going to go back to the metaphor of a seed, um, the time it takes to grow a seed. And sometimes I get frustrated and I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, it takes time to make things happen. Um, but the youth have definitely, you know, they've allowed me to see that progress looks many different ways. And I think there's a very systematic way that we want to see progress and it has to be a certain thing and we want to see numbers and all these things. But I've seen progress in so many ways from like social emotional growth, from leadership and all these things that, you know, how do you quantify those things? But you know that they're growing so much and they're providing so much feedback of, you know, what's important to them. You know, they have different needs that, you know, sometimes when we want to give resources, you know, we're not considering some things, you know. So when I talk about like, you know, academic advising, sometimes it's very specifically like, you know, we're going to get good grades, we're going to get all A's and all these things. But sometimes that's not what everyone um, can do at the time, but we always have to encourage them to do their best. Um, and I've been seeing that students bring so many gifts that you wouldn't even imagine. Like there's some students who are super good at music, some students who like ended up telling me like, oh yeah, like I'm, I'm creating lyrics for, you know, music. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so you wouldn't know that about them. Or some students who were having issues with, um, you know, attendance, but then you, you learn that they're like hustling this whole business that they're like selling shoes and clothes and all these things. And you're like, I had no idea about, about this. And like, I, you know, people would just think that they're students who are not, you know, they don't have ambition or they don't have, you know, desire to do things, but then yet yeah, they're doing all these things that you can't quantify within the traditional model of like success or academic success. So, you know, it makes me open my eyes and my mind to like, you know, how do we nurture these things in youth that are important to them, you know? And how do we use that as leverage to pull them back into school? And I know I don't have the tools for that now, but I think, you know, these are questions that I want to plant, you know, in the community and other people in LA, like how do we nurture the gifts and the passions that youth have themselves to ensure that they're successful and whatever that looks like for them. I know that you're also an artist and um, you incorporate art kind of in your ethos of working with the youth. And I was wondering if you can share a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, so I, I'm also an artist. Um, um, most of my work um, through the arts is through illustration. Um, so a lot of my, the art that has come from me has really been nurtured while I was um, in school. Um, so I did go to school at UC Berkeley um, and it, at UC Berkeley, I worked at a, a community center, which is called the Multicultural Community Center. And that's really the first place where I learned how to create art in community. Um, so I feel like I really got the tools there to learn um, how to engage folks in different ways. And all that has really expanded once I got to inner city struggle and been able to, you know, incorporate, um, you know, my drawings and illustrations in many different ways that I wouldn't have imagined. Um, we had an event last year, which was, we had our grand opening um, for our organization's first official um, location. We invited the whole community to come. We had music. Um, and then one of my coworkers really encouraged me and pushed me like, hey, we should do a mural. So I was like, okay. So then like within a week, we just created an image. We both of us collaborated together and we created this image um, that I drew. Um, and we just facilitated like community coming in. We had like little kids who were like three years old to like um, elders coming in and they're all painting in um, this image that we created. Um, so that was one way that, you know, I felt like was really important to do because, you know, the arts are central to community empowerment, are central to creating um, consciousness to building understanding to building unity um, and art has been a vehicle for that for 
would say thousands of years because that's what creates culture. It creates awareness. So, you know, it makes what we're talking about, all these theories and social justice um, terms and all these things, it makes it accessible when you create art. You know, we're creating an image, we're envisioning, we're channeling, you know, the world we want to see, you know, and I'm always moved by this um, quote by the Zapatistas. Um, they say, un mundo donde quepan muchos mundos, or a world where many worlds fit. So I feel like we can't envision that world without being creative. So that's where the art comes in. It's like, you know, we're creating social change, we're trying to create transformation, but we need that creative mind to be able to make that world happen because we have to dream it first. So that's for me how art fits into that. That's so beautiful. Yeah, and I think for me, um, art is like a, a way of, of telling your own story, right? And, and getting it out there. Um, I think a, a piece of your story is, um, you had mentioned to me, you're from Boyle Heights and also from the San Gabriel Valley and, and you attended these schools that um, the youth that you work with also are going to. And so there's a sense of responsibility in that, right? Like a sense of responsibility in being an Angelino. And so what does that mean to you? Like what does being an Angelino mean to you? Good question. Um, so I think from a young age, um, I have felt that sense of responsibility. Um, I know there's so many stories um, in Los Angeles so many experiences and identities and places that people come from, which makes, you know, which makes the city the vibrant story that it is. Um, and my story specifically, you know, I think it's important for me to talk about my family and how that legacy brought me to where I am at now. Um, so, you know, my mom was born in East LA um, and my mom's side of the family came to the east side of Los Angeles in the late 50s. Um, my grandmother and my grandfather were migrant farmers um, in the Central Valley of California. Um, and they came to the East LA in the 50s at the prime of where there's a lot of movement that was going on. Um, so I know growing up, I would hear stories about everything that would take place in our neighborhood. Um, I heard about the Chicano Moratorium growing up. I heard about the walkouts. Um, so hearing all those stories as a child really formed my understanding and my sense of responsibility to my neighborhood and to my community as, at large. Um, and my father um, is actually an immigrant. He came from Colombia. Um, so, you know, I have multiple stories and understandings of, you know, different struggles that, you know, our community at large has, you know, because there's so much complexity to it. Um, and all that informs, you know, who we are and that responsibility that we have to ourselves, our community and our people, wherever they are at, at the globe. Um, but, you know, as a young person, just hearing all these intersecting stories, you know, I felt um, so responsible. And I think back, like, like, you feel so responsible at a young age. We don't realize, like, how much kids feel responsible for the world around them because they're so sensitive to things. So, you know, at a young at a young age, you know, I, you know, I knew I wanted to do well in school, which led me to, you know, go to UC Berkeley, um, and then in there at UC Berkeley, like getting involved in the community and student activism and different things like that, um, which always led me to want to come back um, to where I grew up. You know, we talk about numbers, we talk about statistics, we talk about the inequities, and sometimes we see it from a very outside lens or a paternalistic way um but i was like well i'm from here you know i can't look at those numbers and that data in that way because these are my people these are my peers these are my relatives you know so i think when i do the work with you know the young people you know it's not i'm not just seeing them as youth or as clients or as whatever you know they're my people so i think that sense of responsibility that i have is that you know i want to nurture our community because you know the inequities and the legacies of that we all carry, whether it's like historical trauma, racism, all these things that we all carry are so real. But at the same time, we are such a powerful community because we're so resilient and we have so much power in us. It's really amazing um, and, and so well said. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, 
where can folks find you? How can folks support uh, this youth program? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so, um, so we can find Inner City Struggle online, innercitystruggle.org. And it's, there's also an Instagram account. Um, so the at sign, inner, inner City Struggle. Um, so yeah, you can find um, the organization that way. Something important to know is that we have a big campaign coming up. Um, we have an election. We're going to have a voter guide soon. And we have different things. We're supporting different propositions that you should look into. Um, so you can find it there on our website and Instagram. Awesome. Thank you so much, John Jairo. For sure. Thank you. Thank you.